Windham Abbey. It's in the, in the village or town. It's um, 12th century. In fact, it survived to a large extent the dissolution of the monasteries because the population were allowed to actually rec reclaim, rebuy it at valuation cost. So, this at the time that Henry VIII nationalised the monasteries, which I think is the, probably the best word for it, uh, the local population was given the option of repurchase or purchasing it back, uh, which they did once the place had been valued and put, uh, continued to use it for whatever use they chose. Along the side of the um, the Abbey, I've got one of these things. I've forgotten the name of it is now. I know it's a good word you can use in Scrabble because it must have a Q in it or something. It's like a um, a, a wall, but when you're standing somewhere, you can't see it's there, so it keeps the sheep and the cows in, but without obstructing the view. I've forgotten what it's called. But there's one here. It's very rare to see a, a gravestone which gives so much of a description, but here William Fisk was accidentally killed on the railway near Eccles Road Station on the 10th of October 1879, aged 57. And quite a lot of information of how, he, how uh, Mr Fisk died. And his wife died also quite young, 58, four years later. Well this is the South Tower. Seems to be much better nick than the, uh, the North Tower. I think by the time of the Reformation these great buildings were destroyed. As much as I disagree with religion, I mean, the, the vandalism and destruction of things which could be used for more positive uses is outstanding. So we have a typical East Anglian eight-pointed uh, font, or eight-sided font, I should say. But what this has got very odd about it, it's got this very large um, cover, which opens to the altar, uh, which is down there. And uh, this was the Lady Chapel, which was once for the, where the women used to have to uh, worship in here. That was when it was first built. Or but the, uh, it still continues to keep its, its name. The, uh, so, the, the cover of the font was the font is, I presume, 14th, 15th century. The, uh, the thing there is about 100 years old, the, the top. An outstanding hammer beam roof. When these things were built in like the 12th, 13th centuries, it got very ornate and it was the people who didn't believe that God would see. Later on, they came to the conclusion that God wouldn't see or didn't care less, and the people certainly below certainly couldn't see, so they spent less time and effort doing them. You've got a mirror here, see to the mirror. Mm, that might be showing it more. Concretely, I don't know. It's the mirror. There's 72 angels, I think, or something like that. It's an incredibly impressive altar screen. I don't understand it's comparatively modern. But 100 years ago it was started. Really impressive. I mean, the style doesn't look modern at all, I mean, not that it looks extremely Catholic, rather than Protestant, it's the Church of England. So there's the organ, installed in 1753, and when I look at the stonework here, you can see it's the same uh, white uh, stone that came from Caen, 
uh, in Normandy that was used to build Norwich Cathedral. In fact, it's a bit of a you can see the similarity between Norwich Cathedral and quite incredible work for such a small place as here, as it would have been then, and well, still is today, of course. And to bring the stone from so far. Very, very impressive. So this is the West Tower of uh, Wyndham Abbey. Now, in 1549, at the time of the Kets Rebellion, after it had been put down by the government uh, using foreign mercenaries, uh, Robert Kett was uh, hanged in Norwich, whereas his brother was hanged from this tower here, uh, the West Tower at uh, Wyndham Abbey. Um, his body obviously had been left there as a warning to others. Um, the revolt was to do with harsh conditions on the land and enclosure of uh, uh, people who couldn't grow their own food and uh, Robert Kett himself was a landowner and uh, he wouldn't have suffered from it, he would have benefited from the uh, but he obviously had a social conscience and the objective was to try and lead, uh, to try and force change which to a certain extent did come later Yesterday I saw a film from 1985 about Lady Jane Grey and in this film it sort of suggested that she wanted to put a stop to the uh, enclosures. Now I don't know if that's true or it's not true, it's just something put in by the film, but uh, it makes a point.